the conflicting viewpoints method is actually a really similar and very useful method to use for the SAT when you have paired passages. So for those of you who are also studying for the SAT, paired passages and conflicting viewpoints are actually pretty similar, um, except the one big difference, well, the two big differences are one, they're science related, and two, you have that intro passage, that intro paragraph, two paragraphs, etc., that you don't have in a paired passage. Um, for those of you who are not doing SAT, don't know what a paired passage is, that's okay. We'll cover them. You'll or you won't cover paired passages. We'll cover conflicting viewpoints passages. You'll understand what they are. Everything's good. But it's always nice to have a little frame of reference for other things. Okay, so in conflicting viewpoints, like I said, you have intro of some sort. You have a uh, person one. So they're generally going to be, you know, scientists, researcher, etc. So you have person one, and then you have person two. So however many paragraphs each one of these little three categories entails, they're always going to be in that order, unless the intro doesn't exist, which very occasionally will happen. So the idea is that if you read the intro, then person one, and then person two, when you got to the answer choices, you might have kind of mixed up person one and person two's opinion. It would be really easy to do. And if you look at the answer choices for a lot of conflicting viewpoints questions, they purposely will give you answers that would match for person one and also for person two. So if they ask you about person one and you've just read person two, get a little confused, the answer that would match for what you just read is definitely going to be there. So the big point with conflicting viewpoints is that you want to keep straight which person has which opinion. And that is partially notes, but it's also the order in which you do things. So um, step one is read the intro. And you're also going to, you know, like take notes on it and whatnot, but we'll go over that in a second. So step one, read intro and person one. Step two is unlike what most people like to do, you're not going to read person two, you're going to ignore them for a second. You are going to do person one questions. And you're going to know that they're person one questions um, because you're going to kind of skim them and if you see the number one and not the number two, then that's probably a person one. Um, also, they're not going to be in order. So a person one question could be the first one, you know, the fifth one, and the seventh one, for instance. So that would be totally normal. So you have to kind of search for them a little bit. Don't spend a ton of time doing this. It's literally you're just looking for, you know, scientist one or researcher one. And just make sure that it doesn't make both or, you know, neither, etc. Okay, so we do our person one questions. Then... Step three is we're going to read person two's opinion. And we're going to mark up, etc. But I'll show you that in a second. Step four is do the person two questions. So you're doing the same thing. You're looking for the number two. And then at the very end, step five, you do the both questions. So I mean by both questions is the ones that are mentioning both authors um, or ones where sometimes there's questions that could be referencing the entirety of the passage. So it could be the intro, person one, and person two. It's basically everything that's left over. And at this point, if you've made a small mistake and you've accidentally not done one of the person two questions or the person one questions, Obviously, you know, you would do it at this point. But as long as you get a couple passages of practice in, you should be fine identifying which ones go into which step. So easy, five steps. The idea is you just make sure that person one is done, then the questions, then two, then the questions. That way they can't confuse you or trick you about which person said which thing. Okay. Um, while you're reading, you don't want to make... You know, you don't want to make a bunch of notes. This is not the reading passage, um, or this is not a reading passage. You don't really have time 
or space or energy or anything to write down that much. So you do want to note a couple of key things. So let's go ahead and say uh, key things to know. All right. So um, you want to note down the two opinions. That's the most important thing. But within the intro, you want to note anything that seems central to the argument. So you kind of want the like main topic underlined or circled or starred, etc. So you want to know what the main topic is and you want to underline any key details. And a lot of times that's going to be like things that you look at and at first maybe don't quite understand, but you read twice and realize like, oh, okay, this is an explanation of what the main topic is. This is what we're going to be talking about. So anytime that you know what the people are talking about, that's important. And then also, a lot of times you get a reason, just like you have in um, your research summary passages. You'll have something like, two scientists um, discuss this, or two scientists debate the reason for that. So if you've got that, perfect. Now you know exactly what the point of the two authors' essays are. So you have main topic, key details, the reason. That's all going to be in your intro. And then, when you read your Scientist 1 or Scientist 2, you want to have the opinion. Hugely important. So, uh, you want opinion. So, the opinion of the first person, the opinion of the second person, and then any key evidence. Now, this should all be things like underlining or circling. You don't want to be writing a bunch of stuff down. If it's maybe one word per person, that's okay. That's not going to be the end of the world. But remember, you only have about five minutes to do each passage, and conflicting viewpoints, you know, is the same as any other passage in terms of time. So you've got only five minutes. You don't want to waste a lot of it writing down any unnecessary notes. So just try to underline things, point to them, etc. That said also, um, key evidence is not all the evidence in the entire thing. So if it seems like a stream of, you know, six different pieces of evidence, one after the other, then just underline the opinion because there is no, like, primary key evidence. There's just a bunch of different kind of interesting evidence all rolled up into one thing. So all you want to do is underline things, and then once you go to the questions, you have a better idea and a better understanding of what it is that you're going to be looking for. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and look at a passage together. So um, the passage that we're going to look at, we'll give you a second to find it. Um, it starts with polypeptide molecules, a chain, and notice, unlike the other passages you've been looking at, it's all just writing. So you've got a first little paragraph, and it says one, two, three, four. A next paragraph, uh, eventually you get scientist one's opinion, scientist two's opinion, and then there are questions that follow. So hopefully everybody has found that. Again, uh, try to make sure that you have notes or something, you know, paper of some sort, um, or your phone. It doesn't matter as long as you're just writing notes and you're not getting distracted by other things, um, so that we can kind of go through the method together while we look at our real passage. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase the screen, and we will start up.